everyone agrees that William Shakespeare is one of the best writers of plays and poems in the whole wide world. His plays are still being performed in theatres and studied at schools across the globe, even today, 400 years after he died. So what is just so great about him? Let's find out. Hi folks, my name is William Shakespeare and this is my story. This is me, Will Shakespeare. I'm the first son in my family. My poor old parents had two little girls before me, but they died of disease when they were babies. It's cosy by the fire here in our house in Stratford-upon-Avon. Here's my mum. She's a farmer's daughter. Aha! It looks like we're having fish for lunch today. And this is Dad. He's a successful glove maker. Everyone wears them round here and he spends all day stitching leather into gloves, and then I pitch them and play with them. Let's zoom forward to me at school. Learning to write with an ink pot and a feather quill pen can get very messy. Splodges everywhere. Very few boys and girls went to school in my day. Most children had to start working and help their parents make money. Times were tough. But my father was an important man around town, and that meant that I was able to go to the local grammar school and learn how to read and write. Our schoolmaster taught us subjects like history, Greek, and Latin. He's put some Latin on the blackboard. Teachers were extremely strict in my day. Put a foot wrong and you got a beating. What I really like most of all is plays, acting, theatre, writing, that sort of stuff. I had tons of ink and loads of sharp quill pens. The paper you have today wasn't around when I was writing. Parchment was the best thing to scribble on. And don't forget, I didn't have any electricity either. I had to write by the window or by candlelight at night. Parchment was made from dried animal skin without the fur and my quills were all goose feathers with a sharpened nib, which I dip into the ink. Lots of drips and splodges! <laughs> Try and imagine writing all those plays without a biro or a laptop. Not surprisingly, my signature looks a bit wobbly. It was tough work, but if you practice, you get good at it. Here's a page of mine. You can see I sign my name on the bottom of the page. When I was 18, I got married to Anne, Anne Hathaway. She was a farmer's daughter like my mother, and we had a daughter called Susanna, followed by twins called Judith and Hamnet. It was a busy household, but you know, don't you, what I spend most of my time doing? Writing! I had so many ideas pouring out of my head that I just had to write them all down. I wrote long poems, short poems, called sonnets, 154 of them, and all kinds of plays. I was an actor as well as a playwright, and I had a pretty good idea of how to tell an exciting story on stage. Soon, I organised a bunch of actors to perform my plays. We got together, a group of us called the Chamberlain's Men, and the actors would learn the lines as fast as I could write them, and then we put the plays on the stage. Girls weren't allowed to be actors, so all the girl parts had to be played by boys. We performed most of our plays at a theatre we helped to build called The Globe in London. What was The Globe like? Well, for one thing, it was pretty big. Around 3,000 people could fit inside it, and it had an open roof, so when it rained, the standing people got wet. <laughs> When a performance was on, there was a flag flying on the roof. A canopy hung over the stage to protect the actors from the rain, and the trap door in the floorboards was a brilliant way for actors to pop up unexpectedly and surprise the audience. Richer people could sit in comfy seats in the galleries and get a good view. The rest of the audience stood around the stage, pointing and shouting and laughing and chatting and eating and drinking. Hold on a minute! What's that bloke up to? He's a pickpocket and he's nicking that man's money! A few years after we built the globe, disaster struck when a plague, which we called the Black Death, broke out in London and the theatre had to be closed. 
check out the plague doctor with his beaky mask filled with sweet-smelling flowers as he goes about the town trying to save people. Nasty job, that one. Glad I'm a playwright. Animals are dropping dead. People are covered in horrible sores and boils. And everyone is trying to save themselves. The Black Death was a nasty, dangerous part of my life. But what else was going on when I was around? Red-headed Queen Elizabeth I was on the throne of England. When I was still a teenager, the dashing sailor Francis Drake had sailed all around the world and then fought off the enemy in the Spanish Armada. When I was about 40, Queen Elizabeth died and James I became king. He was a thoughtful, educated man and he loved the theatre and books and reading. He organised an easier translation of the Bible so that more people could read it. I was a busy guy, always scribbling away. In my lifetime, I wrote 10 plays about great kings, which are known as the history plays. I also wrote 10 plays with unhappy endings called tragedies. Ever heard of Romeo and Juliet? It doesn't get much sadder than that. But I'm not all gloom and doom. I also wrote 18 funny plays called comedies, full of silly characters and stupid jokes, which still make people laugh. And don't forget the 14-line poems known as sonnets, 154 of them in all. Phew! Shakespeare died on his 52nd birthday. Worst birthday ever! Seven years later, a couple of his actor friends collected together all his plays into a book which we know as the First Folio. If you've ever said good riddance to someone or listened to a ref talk about fair play, if you've heard about somebody who's got a heart of gold or used the expression love is blind, well, you're quoting exactly what he wrote more than 400 years ago. Time hasn't changed the importance of Shakespeare's plays. Inside each one, you'll find people with feelings, fears, problems and hopes that everyone can understand today. So let's hear it for William Shakespeare!